Hello and welcome to another Ice Tech FAQ from Manitowoc Ice. My name is Josh Capadlo. I'm one of the technical trainers here at the Factory Training Center in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And today what we're going to talk about is we have this 1900 pound remote Indigo NXT machine that makes ice beautiful. It freezes to the plate, makes a perfect bridge, but when we go into harvest, we're just not getting the ice to fall off the plate. So today we're going to take a look at how to properly diagnose what's going on in harvest. Before we ever diagnose any issue with the harvest cycle, we want to always first confirm that we have a solid freeze cycle. We want to make sure that we hit all of our parameters in freeze. Did we freeze for the right amount of time? Did we build the right bridge of ice? The other thing that you'll always get asked in tech support was, what was your T2 temperature? As you can see here, we're just over six minutes in freeze and our T2, also known as the discharge line temperature sensor, is above 150 degrees. So we know now we have plenty of heat to do this harvest properly as long as everything else in the harvest system is working correctly. So right now we're taking a look at our gauges in freeze. You see according to the chart here on the right side of the screen, we're in a 70 degree room. So our discharge pressure should be between 280 and 340. We're right on target with that. Our suction pressure should be between 75 and 38. And yep, we're right on target with that as well. Our suction pressure is gonna gradually drop throughout the freeze cycle. As we build up some more superheat inside that evaporator and start to drop the temperature out of the water, the load goes down a little bit, and so the suction pressure is going to drop as well. So now our machine has gone into harvest, and you can see our pressures in comparison to our chart. Our discharge pressure should have come down to 170 to 180, and our suction pressure should have come up to 120 to 130. As you can see, both of our gauges are well below what our advertised pressures are on our chart. When we see low and low, it's always indicative of a failed HPR system. A couple things I wanna mention before we go ahead and use the gauges in order to act as an HPR system. You always wanna check and make sure that you have proper voltage at the HPR solenoid coil to start with, as well as like I said earlier, always make sure that you are doing a proper freeze cycle before you diagnose anything in the harvest cycle. If we don't build up enough heat, or if we don't freeze properly, it's gonna always throw off your harvest cycle and you'll be chasing a ghost that's not really there. We've already confirmed through the pressures that we have a bad HPR, but some guys on the phone just don't trust that low and low is an HPR saying that we have. So I'm gonna show you how to use your manifold gauge now in order to act as if you are an HPR valve and get the ice to harvest just to set yourself at ease that, hey, I do need to replace the HPR solenoid as well as the HPR pressure regulating valve. So as you see, I already have my gauges installed on the low side and the discharge side here. But what we're gonna do now is take the third hose, the yellow refrigeration hose that would normally go to your refrigeration cylinder. I'm going to hook it up to the receiver service valve. This will all make sense to you in one moment. Now that I have all three hoses hooked up, I'm going to power back on the machine, let it make ice, let it get back all the way through freeze. And I'll check back in with you guys in harvest and we'll go through how to act as if you're the HPR and get that ice to fall off the plate. Okay, so we're in harvest and as you see, we have the low and low again. What we're gonna do now is I have this yellow knob opened up a little bit. And remember this yellow hose is going to the top of our receiver. What I'm now going to do is slightly open up this suction side and I'm gonna meter refrigerant for a 410 machine somewhere between the 120 and 160 PSI range. I like to take it right around 150. And what you're gonna see is the discharge side is gonna come up and start to get into that normal range of where we would expect to see it according to the chart. As we start to flood that evaporator a little bit, we're gonna to have to keep opening it and monitoring it. And what we're doing now is we're essentially acting as the HPR what the HPR is doing, if you look at the diagram here, it's taking vapor refrigerant off of the top of the receiver and putting it into the suction side. We're doing that same thing here with our manifold gauge in order to help this ice fall off the plate. So as you see here, as our pressures are getting back to normal, our ice is starting to release from the plate. We're breaking that vacuum across the top with the air pump, as you can see. And here any second, we have ice in the bin. So again, you're just slightly opening up the suction side. You're not gonna be flooding the compressor with 300 PSI of gas. 
for 404, you would be monitoring it between 70 to 100. And for 410, you're going to bring it up between 120 and 160. So now we've confirmed two separate ways that we have a failed HPR system. You always service these as the solenoid and the regulator. Don't try to just buy one or the other. Just service them both. Don't, don't play around with that. I hope now you're an HPR system master. Understand how to properly diagnose it. Order some parts. Leave this machine off. Don't try to run it with a failed HPR. It's just going to keep going into water-assisted harvest or most likely probably a thaw cycle. Not worth it. Could damage the machine a little bit. Just leave the machine off, get some parts, return and replace it, get your customer making some ice again. From all of us here at Manitowoc Ice, we appreciate you tuning in to another Ice Tech FAQ. We hope to see you at the Factory Training Center one day soon here for the Level 3 Factory School. You can use this QR code to scan and get more information, as well as use the link in the video description below. Again, we appreciate you tuning in. Like and comment and subscribe for more content.